How's it going? I'm Matty Ice, and this is the Brazil debacle explained. And by the Brazil debacle, I mean the 2022, what was the World Cup for Brazil? So these are the reasons I think Brazil absolutely failed at the 2022 World Cup. I think this was a disastrous loss for Brazil and a disastrous loss for Brazil soccer. And just I'd like the country, and I think I feel like this is the end of an era. Uh, I, I think this was very sad and just hard to watch. But I think I think this is a I, I I feel like they won't be back for a while after this. I feel like this destroyed their whole their whole whole situation culture really to be honest. Um, but these are the reasons I feel like that that the Brazil team failed. And uh, we'll start off with a questionable goalkeeper, Alisson. A couple a couple of things about him. Number one, like you know, why is he starting over Ederson? I just think Ederson's a better goalkeeper. He's more consistent, solid. I think he's better at penalties. I mean, he's got to be, right? Um, I just... I, I He's gotten scored on less over the last two years. He's gotten scored on less this season, um, you know, in in, in um, Premier League. I just... I, I question... I question that decision. I, a, a lot of the Brazil fail comes down to Tite, their coach, and we'll get to him. But I feel like a lot of the lineup decisions, I've, I was questioning every game. And this is definitely one of them. Alisson. He he has a girl name. You know, let's not beat around the bush. Um, he, dude has a girl name. Allison. I mean, there was a girl. I was hitting on a girl named Allison in high school. I, I think a lot of people were. Uh, Allison's a girl name. Uh, Allison was pretty hot in high school. But um, this Allison is... is is, uh, is a dude, you know. Uh, <laughs> um, I question his Brazilianness. I really do. Um, now I understand he was probably born in Brazil, yada yada yada. But like, bro, what Brazilian you know looks like this? What Brazilian you know looks like this? Bro, look at the Brazil team and then look at Alisson. Bro, I don't know, man. He just for me, he's not Brazilian. Like, I don't know. Like, he looks like he's Polish or something. Like, bro, how are you that pale and you live in, like, one of the hottest countries in the world? Like, that makes no sense. That's like, that's like, that's like, <laughs> that's like a dude that looks like that playing for, like, Cameroon or something. Like, bro, like, how are you so pale and you play for Brazil? Like, how are you Brazilian? And, like, I don't want to get on him because, like, I understand we all from here and there. Uh, I sound like a white guy, whatever, like. But like, I don't think this guy's Brazilian. I'm just that's just my two cents. That's just my opinion. Whatever. Very questionable coaching. Okay, let's get back to T. Let's let's go back to flaming Tite. I should have put him in here. I really should have put him in here in the in the collage. Um, I feel like his decision making throughout the entire tournament was questionable. I think the worst decision he made was putting in Fred, and with with ten minutes left, up by a goal. I I just for me, you don't put in that type of a player in that situation you ride it out you ride it out and you especially don't put fred in first of all i wouldn't have even called up fred i would have i would have left fred at home dude don't get mean players i i don't know what it is this is something manchester united can't seem to figure out either don't get meme players like players that are have been memed for being trash don't put them on your team. It doesn't matter what they're doing in practice, yada, 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 dude. There's like a vibe. People expect them to fail. Like, I don't know why they don't get this. Like, it's real. Like, people, that expectation, the mind, the world is controlled by the mind. Like, people know he's going to fail before he plays. I, I knew, and I swear, I promise you, I talked to my boy Lino about this. Before the World Cup started, I was like, bro, like the one problem I have, we, we have with Brazil is their midfield and specifically Fred. I was like, I just don't, I just don't trust him like ever really. I just don't trust him as a player. Like, I don't know, I don't know what it is. Like, obviously he's good, but I'm just saying, like, I don't trust him as a player, like at the highest level. I just really don't. Um, <clears throat> and what do you know? He goes in the 110th minute, loses the ball. Croatia comes around and scores. I was just like unbelievable, like, and it, it was it was very it was decision making like that. I felt like the lineup, like I said, every game I felt like the lineup was questionable, and they got away with it almost every game. They didn't get away with it against Cameroon. They didn't get away with it against Croatia. Um, they were three and two this World Cup, which is not really that great to be honest. I think even Team USA was 
to even Team USA was only lost one game. Um, a lot of teams only lost one game. Brazil lost two games um, out of five. You know, it's not, it's not really that great. Uh, three games out of five, or three out of five, three and two record will not win you many trophies like ever in any league in any tournament. But um, yeah, I just felt like some of his decision making was very questionable. Let's move on to the next point. Fred, yeah, we talked about him. Yeah, no Martinelli, no Gabriel. Was that it? Okay, yeah. Let, let, let's talk about the disrespect for Arsenal players in this lineup. Um, number one, Gabriel has had a fantastic season. I'm not talking about Gabriel Martinelli. I'm talking about Gabriel, the, the defender. Uh, Arsenal are only top of the Premier League, the most challenging league to win in the world. Um, you know, Premier League is the best league in the world. If you win the Premier League, I feel like you should be in the starting 11 of any team. Um it's you. It's a, it's a juice. It's a winning mentality. And Gabriel has has played really well this season in defense. To me, he epitomized more of Brazilian the Brazilian way of playing than Marquinhos does for me. Um, and what do you know? Marquinhos missed a penalty. Marquinhos wasn't great in the against Croatia. Um, what do you know? For me, Gabriel's a better defender. I think Gabriel just has a little bit more energy to his game. Like he just. He's almost like more of like a performer for me. Like he's, it's like you notice him more when he plays. Um, I just, for me, I just feel like that will, you, you got to reward success sometimes. Like, you know, I'm not going to keep harping on this because I know not everybody's an Arsenal fan, but I just think he should have started. I mean, this is the top, this is the best defensive team in this half of the season, probably in the world, you know? Like, I just. I just, I, I, I very, and if not, I just very much question starting Marquinhos. And Thiago Silva is 38 years old. I just, I question that a lot. I just question that a lot. And no Martinelli, bro, I'm, I'm sorry. I can sit here all day. You cannot convince me that Martinelli is not better than Vinicius. Like, please try to convince me that, that Vinicius is better than Martinelli. I just don't see it. I don't see it. I don't see it. I don't see it. I'm sorry. I just don't see it. I don't see it. I'm sorry. I just don't see it. Martinelli, again, Arsenal are top of the Premier League. Martinelli's had a great first half of the season. How does he not get a taste on this team? Um, I don't know. For me, that's very questionable coaching. You, you they, they kept playing Vinicius like he was scoring two, three goals a game. Vinicius had one of the sorriest World Cups. He got exposed, and I'll have a separate video about players that got exposed. But, like, I feel like for sure Martinelli should have started. Um and played like I just I feel like his impact is more I feel like his energy is a bit more Martinelli and I feel like he's just a smarter overall better player I just I I feel like he's he's a basic he's a better goal scorer Vinicius puts some work on Real Madrid but who doesn't bro that league is trash and we're that's that's the next point La Liga is overrated for me La Liga is overrated bro like I'm don't believe me look at the top scorers in the World Cup right now how many of them are playing in La Liga bro like it's literally like I think they're the top 20 scores. I look like six, seven of them play the Premier League. Three, four of them, League One. A couple in Bundesliga. A couple like in Saudi League. Dude, La Liga has like one player in the top. I, I think Ferran Torres. And I'm like, bro, Ferran Torres is a Man City reject. Like, dude, La Liga for me is overrated. Now, was La Liga good three, four years ago? Yes. Things change. Was La Liga great in the past? Yes. Very recently, too. And Ronaldo was there. Yeah, they were great. I'm not gonna argue with that. La Liga, or we had a La Liga team just win the Champions League, sure. And I'm not gonna get too much on that, but sure. I mean, let's be real. Madrid probably should have lost like half those games in the knockout stage, but whatever. All right, <laughs> like we're not gonna get on that. They they deserve to win. Da, da, da. But I'm just saying, like for me, La Liga is overrated. Like when you dribbling past Hitafe and freaking Aruba players or whatever. Bro, it's, it's not the same against these top-class players, dude. That's why I trust Premier League players. I trust French League players more. Um, look look at Mbappe and Messi. They're not even destroying the French League. They're the best players. Don't get me wrong. But, like, bro, in La Liga, Mbappe would probably have, like, 20 goals by now or some crap. Dude, like, dude, it's it's a different level of physicality. I, I feel like La Liga has taken a, a plunge. I think they went from, like, arguably the best league to, like, for me, they're, like, fourth or fifth now. I just, I have no faith, and I just I just don't see it, dude. I don't think Atletico Madrid are good. I don't think Real Madrid minus Benzema are good. I don't think Barcelona's good. I don't think any of those teams are good. Barcelona's leading the league right now, and they're not even in the, uh, well, 
So is Arsenal, but um, they're not even in the freaking Champions League. But anyways, Vinicius was for me. Vinicius inspired my next video, which is players that got exposed in the World Cup. I just that performance was shocking. But yeah, that he's a big reason why Brazil failed. I feel like if he just had a half decent World Cup, they would have succeeded. But he just I, I don't ever want to see. I, if I was a Brazilian coach. I would strongly consider never playing him again after that. I would just be like, look, we we don't reward that type of failure around here. Rodrigo, also, dude, same thing I'm talking about with La Liga being overrated. Rodrigo in La Liga looks like looks like one of the top ten young players in the world. In in the World Cup, he's he's just he's just a guy. He's a guy. Like, that's it. Whew. <laughs> playing to strengths. So this is another point. I just feel like certain teams play to strengths. Certain teams try to play to strengths. I think Brazil's strength is dominating on the field, doing the flair, scoring goals. If they're not doing that, they're losing. Croatia's strategy, I, I and I knew midway through the game that Croatia was going to win. I, I texted, I texted my boy. I was like, I was like, I was like, yo, Croatia's going to win. Croatia's going to win this one. Like, I could tell. It's because Croatia, they were playing right into Croatia's hand. Croatia wants the game to be close. They want it to go to PKs. Take it to PKs, please. Take it to PKs. Like, you know, and I'll give Brazil some credit. You know, they they gave it. They, I don't I don't say it was lack of effort. I don't think they lost like a horrible loss. But um, basically, some teams will be have different attributes that you might not even see. Because like the average player, average fan will look at it and be like, "Look, Brazil completely dominated the game, right?" But like teams like Croatia, that's how they play. That's how they want you to play. They want a counterattack. They want, they want, like I said, they wanted to go to PKs. Like I'm get, like some goalkeepers are just better at PKs. That's just what it is. Like, so for me, yeah, I think, I think, I think Croatia played to their, they played to Croatia's strengths the whole game. And then last, overconfidence. So where was the dancing against Croatia? Where was the dancing against Cameroon? Where was the dancing? They deserve to lose. I mean, overconfidence. I feel like is is the is this is the team is the definition of overconfidence. They got a bunch of these players that think they hot, and they really not. They really not. I I, I think they're a team full of players who think they hot, but they really not. I think I think and not to keep going in on Brazil, but this is part of what I do. I just feel like Brazil players get kind of overinflated based on their nationality. I feel like if half these players were Canadian, they probably wouldn't even be in the leagues they're playing in. I feel like if Fred was Canadian, bro, they probably would have sent him to the MLS by now. I feel like if a lot of these players, Anthony, I feel like if Anthony was was American, well, he'd be a star. But like, dude, he wouldn't be starting. He wouldn't. They wouldn't have bought him for a hundred mil at at United. What has he done? I haven't seen anything. Um, I feel like this team. They just think they're they're greatness. They they're like we're present. This is what we do. But you gotta deliver on the field first. You gotta you gotta put teams like Croatia away. I mean, dude, Croatia, come on, man. Versus Brazil, come on, man. Dude, that's like a team that Croatia's Croatia's good, but like, come on, man. But yeah, that's that's my summary of of the Brazil debacle. Let me know what you guys think overall. These are my key key reasons. Um. But like I said, I really think that this is the saddest loss I've ever seen from a country. I think this is like an absolute disaster, dude. And keep in mind, it's been a minute since Brazil has won a World Cup now. It's, start, it's starting to get even longer. It's starting to get even longer. It with Neymar leaving, I think it's Neymar's last World Cup, sadly. Um, for me, Neymar's like the last great Brazilian player. I don't, I don't even see anybody else. You know, I talked about my boy Martinelli, though, but like, I'm talking about like, Ballon d'Or quality player, um, yeah. I feel like this is this is the dark end for Brazil, and it's kind of sad. It's actually very sad. Um, I don't know what's going on, but it just seems like the world is shifting, and like there's almost like nothing they can do about it. I just I feel like those Brazilian players just aren't on that next next level anymore. I just I just don't I don't see it. it Cause in the past it was like bro, like every couple years there would be. At least one or two Brazilians that were like top class, like unbelievable, like from Ronaldinho to Ronaldo to Kaká, and then Neymar, and then it was like crickets after that. After Neymar, it's just been crickets. 
crickets do no one comes to mind i think we all thought it was vinicius no <laughs> no <laughs> no so um man it's sad bro because i love watching brazil as a child the reason i even started playing soccer was because of ronaldo r9 uh he was my favorite player growing up but like man this is bad this is bad all right y'all that's it for this video thank you guys for watching this is the brazil debacle explain I'm Matty Ice. Peace out.